Hi, I'm Brandon Davis, and this is Hannah Flutiger. And today, um, she will be asking me questions about the economic, or sorry, just the general feasibility of asteroid mining. Uh, I'll do my best to answer them, and hopefully by the end of it, um, Hannah and the audience has learned um, a bit about asteroid mining. All right, ask away. Okay, great. I guess my first question is like, what is asteroid mining? Because I don't know a lot about it. That's, so that's a good um, question, it's certainly a good place to start. Okay, so for this, I'm just gonna draw in Di some diagrams that explain how asteroid mining has been performed in the past. There have been two complete successful missions that have returned samples, and one mission that just collected a sample is actually going to return uh, in about a year. Um, so imagine this is the Earth. Um, so what essentially we do is we launch um, some sort of the, the, the mining uh, machine into the atmosphere, similar to a satellite, uh, and then in the atmosphere, it'll orbit around for several months to a year. And essentially what it's waiting to do um, during this period is it waits um, for the asteroids, all, all the asteroids that are swirling around our solar system, it's going to have one of those in mind. And eventually that asteroid is going to come pretty close to Earth. And when it does, um, the, the, the mining um, machine, the asteroid mining machine will um, sort of rendezvous with the asteroid and circle around it. And once it's there, uh, in the case of the two Hayabusa ventures, which are the ones that were completed, successful, returned a sample back to Earth, uh, which were performed by um, Japan's National Space Agency. So what they used is the, um, the Hayabusa would uh, eject a, a remote firing system above the asteroid, then go circle back around to the backside of the asteroid. The remote firing system would fire a high-speed bullet directly into the asteroid, um, after that, the impact would come up, the, there'd be this dust swirling up from the impact. The Hayabusa would come back, return, touch down um, the, on the asteroid, collect the, uh, the dust, and put in a containment character, uh, container, and then come all the way back down to Earth. The Osiris was a little bit different. Uh, so if we have the asteroid here, uh, and the Osiris is, has rendezvous with it, uh, what it did is it actually came down to the Earth, uh, to the asteroid, impacted on it, set up an explosive charge, again creating that dust, and then collected the dust. And the, high, and the Osiris Rex um, is estimated to have over 300 grams of matter that it collected. Uh, that happened within the last year, and it's actually returning as we speak. Okay, so these asteroids are orbiting our planet right now? So, that's a good question. So, if we actually direct our attention to the thing, give me a moment to turn off the lights. All right, um, so in this diagram, uh, I know it's hard to see me, uh, but in this diagram, this is, shows every known charted asteroid uh, in the solar system and sort of where they're headed. Uh, so this, this green, um, right there, this green circle that we're following is the Earth and its orbit, uh, and so where these asteroids are located. So most of the asteroids are going to be between uh, Mars and um, Jupiter, which is out here. Um, uh, 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 orbit, and that is known as the asteroid belt. There are millions upon millions of asteroids circling that area, and that is where the vast majority of asteroids are. Generally, uh, these are going to be sort of more low density asteroids um, that were ejected far into the solar system during the formation. Uh, near Earth, there are much less asteroids, but there are about 14,000 that we know of for, uh, right now. Those are dubbed uh, near Earth asteroids. Um, so you can see asteroids continually sort of um, go in line with our orbit, uh, across in front of it, across behind it. There are asteroids that follow along, known as Jupiter asteroids, um, that follow along with our orbit, uh, and that we're constantly sort of like seeing these asteroids cross in front of us. So that's sort of where asteroids are generally located. Give me a second to turn back the lights. question is kind of like about the technology. So you kind of touched a little bit on like how the mining was done, but how was this technology developed in the first place? So a lot of this technology, um, a lot of it borrows from previous space um, explorations, but the bulk of the research done right now are done by these national space agencies. The two premier ones at the forefront of asteroid mining are Japan's National Space Agency uh, and NASA. Okay. Um, and I guess the next question that kind of comes to mind for me at least is, you know, I, I think of kind of like, of like oil 
and you know how that was considered like a, like a great frontier for energy. Um, and you know people were extremely excited about this idea because they kind of assumed that it was kind of an unlimited resource. But now you know in this this day and age, we kind of have realized that it's actually not. Um, so I guess my concern is like, so how, is this like a renewable resource? Is this kind of you know are we going to eventually use it up? What are the consequences of that? What accompanies that? So I guess kind of what are the limitations of this resource? Yeah, so the sort of what we're going to be extracting, from, so I'm going to start off with just what are we extracting from these asteroids? Um, the resources we are extracting are generally these really dense platinum group uh, materials or metals that are actually really rare on Earth. Uh, and that's sort of what we're targeting. Um, and these are used in, these, I mean, these are used in all sorts of electronics, batteries, solar panels, screens, TVs, uh, and there's also a lot of iron in these asteroids, which is obviously a very valuable building resource. Um, so on the Earth, these resources are fairly scarce. Most of them have already sunk um, into the mantle, into the core, over the course of the billions of years that the Earth has been around. And those that remain on the surface are actually from asteroids. Um, so essentially, when you're talking about like, the renewability of it, uh, when you look at just the sheer magnitude of resources that we hope to capture uh, in these asteroids, and especially these rare resources, uh, it's virtually um, inexhaustible, at least with our current pace. I mean, some of these asteroids, uh, especially the M type, which are the metallic type, contain enough iron to supply Earth for over a decade. And that's just from a single asteroid. And there are millions of them all across our solar system. So things like oil, I mean, that is a resource. You burn it and it's gone. Um, things like metals, you can recycle those. You can reuse those. And not only that, but there's just so much of it out there in the solar system. So I think this is different. There are so many asteroids out there that have the potential to provide us with so many resources that just aren't available on Earth. Um, so I don't see this as similar to oil. I think these are going to last, asteroid mining is going to last a very, very long time. Okay. I guess my next question is, you know, like, so let's say that asteroid mining becomes like this new frontier for uh, technology and human innovation. Obviously, it's a very expensive practice if you only have like two nations, both of whom are like fairly well, extraordinarily wealthy, rather. Um, countries. So I imagine that in the event this kind of becomes privatized, like major companies like Tesla and you know, like the, the you know, like Elon Musk, I, mean, I, I predict that Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk will both make bids to kind of dominate that particular field. So I guess my concern is like, do you think that there's a potential for a monopoly or an abuse of this resource that will negatively impact everybody else? Uh, it depends what sort of regulations and procedures we take place. I mean, if we're smart about this, um, we can prevent that. But I do recognize the potential. And the reason why there's a potential is the startup costs for these sorts of ventures require billions of dollars. They require a billionaire backing them or a government. So right now, it looks pretty good. I mean, the governments are sort of behind this. They're more accountable to the people. They're less likely to act um, in sort of these monopolistic ways. Um, so I think right now, it's generally good. But of course, we have to draft these accords that are going to sort of regulate that and make sure um, you know we don't have these billionaires um, you know, you know, redoubling their wealth um, as a result of asteroid mining. Okay, and I think one, of, my last, if not one of my last questions, is kind of like, so you mentioned that these asteroids contain these kind of materials that are super rare on Earth, right? Like these are materials we don't really see as much. That's why they're so valuable. So if we suddenly have a market that is saturated with all of these extraordinarily rare materials, I imagine that would kind of ha wreak havoc on like the global economy. So I guess, what protective measures like do you hope to see taken? And like, what are the consequences you envision that coming about as a result of asteroid mining? Um, so yes, this would have tremendous changes to our economy. I mean, most of these resources that we're exploiting here are very rare, very expensive things like platinum, very rare, very expensive. Um, so when we actually introduce this to the market, when we introduce tens of thousands of tons of, of things like platinum, these rare metals in the market, it's going to dramatically lower the cost of nearly every single consumer good that we have. And so I think this has the potential to just revolutionize everything, make everything cheaper, make it so we can just produce more things and just increase society's general welfare. Okay, and I think my, my last question, my definitive last question is, do you believe that this is kind of going to be the new and defining form of technology for like the next several centuries and why? Um, I think it will be. As we deplete more resources, and as it gets more expensive to extract resources on Earth because we have to go to these less desirable um, sort of locations, 
I think Ashford mining is going to gain a competitive advantage. And especially as we start to expand to other planets, as we start to just sort of be in space more, um, asteroid mining has the potential to offer a much cheaper alternative to, alternative of access to resources to those colonies. Um, some of these, these asteroids, especially C-type um, asteroids, carbaceous asteroids, are made of, of water, they're made of carbon, they're made of oxygen, all things necessary for life. So I think as we have more colonies, um, Asteroid mining is going to be necessary as we deplete resources, asteroid mining is going to be answered. So yes, I do think it's going to sort of define our future. Okay, I think that's all for me. Awesome. Um, so that's all the questions we have time for now. Is I hope you've learned a little bit about asteroid mining, and I hope Hannah has too. I definitely have. <laughs> uh, thank you for listening, uh, and 